Whiskey spreadsheets. Who doesn't like a good bit of data? I was always interested in what kind of prices offer the best value in whiskey, despite buying some stupid priced whiskey. But anyway, so the first thing I did was I went to Total Wine's website. I'll just switch over to screen capture and I'll talk through what I did. So here we are on Total Wine. You can do a search, single malt, 20, 30, $20 to $30 range, standard size, for now just said Scotland. So 76 bottles appear. And I was interested to know how many bottles are available at each different price range. And so I went through the whole uh, website, you know, changing these numbers and counting them up. And what I ended up was, <laughs> was this kind of bell curve graph here. So at $20 range, there were 85 bottles, 150, 180, 180, you get it. So you can see that the peak of, of uh, whiskey bottles is somewhere in this, let's see, where's the, where's the peak? The bulk of whiskey seems to be in the 50 to $100 range. There's actually a little rush of bottles to get in under the $100 price. Now, normally when there's a glut, <laughs> the glut in the market would suggest potentially the best value because that's where the most competition would be, maybe. So at the current time, which is early uh, 2019, you would think that the best value might be found in the 60 to to $100 range, plus taxes, so maybe 70 to 80 and you can see that there's a pretty long tail once you get out over 150 all the way out. And of course, it goes on up to thousands, right? That led me to this kind of thinking where myself and Deepa talked about how much would we be prepared to pay for different uh, scores, you know. How much would you pay for a 92? Well, $140 or $200 for a 93. And so we were looking at this range, you know, just above the the, the uh, bulk on out to sort of the 200 range here before it gets too crazy. Because I kind of figured, if you look here, the <laughs> where you get um, maybe the best value is in the retail sector where we know it's good taste, good quality, they're available at retail prices. Hopefully they're undervalued. There's a good opportunity compared to maybe at an auction where they would be famous, rare, collectible and overvalued. And maybe there's a little bit of a spillover here. Maybe in the middle here is the is the best place to be where you find something at retail. Like in the US, you can still buy Old Pulteney 17 for $100. Whereas in the UK, that's probably an auction bottle now selling for quite a bit more. So then I took a look at Master of Malt. And I was trying to work out, well, what is the average price for bottles at different years? So you can search for whiskey and you can check what's in stock. So what I did is I, I searched for bottles in stock. In this case, I've limited it to the 12 year whiskey up to 46% ABV, so that's going to capture the 40, 43, 46. Single malt Scotland, so 61 bottles appear. And of course, quite a few cheap ones. Um, this is UK prices without taxes, so you know, add 10% for California taxes at least. Highland Park, Glenfiddich down here of course in the sort of $40 range, Old Pulteney, but of course, you can get to the other extreme, right? We go to the last page. What's the most expensive here? You can buy a 12 year for $500, but these are uh, collectible. So that's not realistic. So at some point you have gotta cut it off. So I decided let's take everything up to something like the Macallan 12 here, which is still a retail bottle currently available and it's not some kind of uh, collectible. And I did the same thing a master of malt where I went through 
six year, seven year, eight year, nine, ten. I skipped some because there were hardly any bottles in there. But here's the 12 year. Here's all the bottles going from, you know, that Highland Park or whatever was at the bottom up to uh, the Macallan roughly. So there's about 53 or so bottles captured in this range for 12 year. And this is the average plus 10% for some US taxes. So the average price of a 12 year, a master of malt is $57. The average price for a 15 year, $75. 18, getting close to 120. 21, 165, by the time you get to 25, you're really up to $300. Now, of course, I've, I've eliminated quite a few of the top crazy ones that jump up rapidly. So, but you can see there's quite a range here from 150 to 450 to average that 305. 30 years start to get pretty loopy as well. So I got all of that data and made myself another little chart. Where is it? Here we go. Down here. Look at those lovely colors. <laughs> and the idea of this chart was to take all the data I found on Master of Malt. And these bands at the top right represent ABV. So the lower band is 40%, 43, 46, and uh, 55 plus. And really when I was searching, I was looking at the average for this 43% band. So this dark green band in the middle represents somewhat normal. So for a 12 year old that was coming in at what, around uh, $60 was it? What was it? Somewhere around there with some taxes. The bottle price would come in right in the middle of this band. For an 18 year old, it would have to be higher. What would that be? 110? No, 120. I forgot what the number was, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, somewhere around here. So these are the kind of ranges that you would say is a whiskey priced at um, a good average price. It's in the middle of the band. Now, of course, quite a few fall outside that. Glenfiddich, 12 year old Glenfiddich, what's that, $27? Well, if I add that in here at $27, it doesn't even show up on my chart because, um, you know, $12, $12 is off the chart down here. I think I have to get up to, oops, that would be off the chart as well. Yeah, $50 12 year old shows up on my chart. There's an interesting little bump actually through the six, seven, eight, nine years because because they're odd years, they tended to be odd, slightly more specialist bottles. So, um, but curious nonetheless. So there's Glenfiddich uh, at 27. Just doesn't really show up. So good for Glenfiddich. What else is down there? Something like Old Pulteney, also well below average because it's going to be off the chart down below here. Bunnehaven 12. $55. So there's Bonhaven right on target at around uh, slightly below average, considering it's 46%. That should give you some idea. And then on the other end of the scale, here's a 12 year old Lagavulin, which is the, um, you know, the cask strength. Now, cask strength, it should be, you could afford to pay more for cask strength because obviously you're getting more alcohol, but this is 140 plus taxes gets you to about 154. So I'm not saying it's not worth it, but what I'm saying is that here's a 12 year old whiskey that is well outside the averages. So maybe an average should be scoring around 89. Well, this suggests for us at least, Lagavulin should be <laughs> scoring up in the 93 band. Hmm, that's kind of a stretch, isn't it? Let's see. What else is on the scale? 15 year old. Dalwini, uh, 55. Good value there for Dalwini. Here's Bowmore, Bowmore, darkest at uh, 70. Still a little below the average and um, 
How's Macallan? Let's see, Macallan Fine Oak, 15 year at 100. Still not so far above, but it's certainly not in the, the average range. range. Uh, no surprises that Macallan starts to go out the top. Ah, <laughs> now here's a 15 year old independent bottle of Brooklatic at 330. Well, that's not going to fit on my chart, is it? Even if I put in 300, you can see it's way up there, 315. So that's a 15 year old that is outstandingly above. So that better be scoring some impressive numbers if that's going to uh, justify that cost. All right, 18 year Tomatin, 18. How much? <laughs> $77. Uh, there you go. Compare these two. We got quite a range there. Let's take this one out. So here's Tomatin down here at uh, well below average prices. Here's uh, Deanston 18. Uh, sorry, what was that? 120. Deanston 18 coming in right in the middle. Average prices currently. And uh, then we have here's Dalmore 18. 230. Let's see where you are. Mmm, yeah. Dalmore's flying out the top here. And uh, it's probably not even. <laughs> what's the percentage on this Dalmore? 40%? I don't know. Of course, it doesn't say. It's uh, not cask strength, though, right? So, well above average. So, is it well above average on flavor? I mean, on taste, on experience? Well, that is up to you. 21 years old. I think you get the idea here, right? Glen Farkless, 21, below. Glen Cadham, 21. There's 170s right in the middle. And Tully Barden, 25 year old at $300. Right on target for being average price. Suggesting what? Average value? Who knows? Let's have a look at Glen Goyne, because they're quite interesting. They have the full range from one distillery. Glen, Glen Goyne 12, $46. Look at that. Good value, or at least I shouldn't say good value. What I should say is it's priced below average. The 15 at $63 priced below average. The 18 at $110 plus taxes gets us to 120. Again, below average pricing. 21, 160. 160, starting to maybe creep up into the average, but that's still, you know, at the low end, isn't it? And then the 25, amazing, it's still at $300. And still available at 300 or 330 with taxes. Just creeping up a bit. But look, across the board, it's really, really uh, quite impressive the way that holds to the averages. Compared to Macallan. Let's go back and have a look at Macallan. So here's Macallan 12. And that is 53. I'm going to actually type it in the 13 year old box just so that we can keep them both together. So the Glen Goyne 12 and the McAllen 12, not far off, are they? It's just a little higher. The McAllen 15, I'll put it in the 16 year box. Mm, starting to, starting to jump up into the above average. Here's the Macallan 18 triple cask at 230. I'll put it in here. Whoa, starting, yeah, starting to escape. The 21, it's not gonna fit. <laughs> 550, 25, $1,700. All right, so obviously we are escaping out the top of the chart here. Um, 
But the Macallan 12... Not too bad. Let's just rearrange those. One, no. Oh. Two, three, oh. But an interesting pattern compared to the Glen Goyne. The 12 is still competitive. Good value, or at least at average value. The 15 for the Macallan starts to hit the top end of the range. And the 18 just starts to skyrocket out the top and uh, same kind of thing happens for Springbank you know you get Springbank you get the 10 year which is somewhere around I don't know $50 the 15 I forget what the 15 was 110 somewhere like that let's see where is the Springbank Let's see, the 10 is 52, the 15 is better than I thought, actually. 95, 52. And then the 18 is 170. So it's kind of, not as bad as the McCallum, but it's doing the similar kind of thing. And then um, where is the 21? And 13. Okay, so here's the here's the 21. Oh, there's a 14. Let's see, 14 at 100. A little more expensive. It's one of the. That's probably cask strength. So, cask strength. That's probably valid, right? It's up at the top end of the cask strength range. 12 year cask strength at 100 as well. Oh, getting out there. 21 sherry cask, yikes, 400, that's not going to fit on my chart. There's a 12 year old green organic. Yeah, these are all, like, here's 19 refill sherry. Now, these are cask strength, but a 19 year old at 280 escaping out the top of the value averages, certainly, even for cask strength. And the 21, I think the standard 21 is look it's up here at 350 that is not going to fit on my chart because I topping out I'm topping out at 350 and but you can see it's well above so there you go I've been having fun with uh, chart numbers and the idea here is like yesterday I stumbled across this bottle of Ardbeg Dark Cove. Not exactly a dusty bottle, but I think it probably, maybe it is. It's been priced probably highly originally because it's $125. It's a no age statement. So I've left uh, year 11 as no age statement. 125. Ooh. <laughs> it's out the top, isn't it? People say it's good though. Mm.